Here are three very unsexy things that you must know about entrepreneurship before attempting at it. Now, I understand that Instagram, YouTube, and all social media platforms make entrepreneurship seem this sexy thing and this thing that everybody should be doing, but I'm here to tell you that it really isn't and it's not very glamorous. Now, let's define entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is somebody who organizes a business taking on greater than normal uh, financial risk to do so. And that's kind of one of the main reasons why I truly believe that not everybody is cut out for entrepreneurship. Now, one thing to understand is that for you to do great in life, you don't need to be an entrepreneur. And not everybody is cut out to become an entrepreneur. Neither is everybody going to become an entrepreneur. Now, there is another term called intrapreneur. And what intrapreneurs are, they simply go into a organization that is already existent where an entrepreneur was willing to take the greater risk, but then they go and they simply take what's already working and then they just go and, and blast it, right? So like at BJK University, we have a bunch of entrepreneurs who simply want to have their own thing and want to feel proud of what they are building and want to you know, create this massive thing um, without taking the risk themselves. Because as the entrepreneur, as the CEO of the company, Yes, you get all the benefit, but you also get all the shit. You get all the heat, you get all the crap, you get everything. And especially when you're first starting out, you know, the very early stages of a business are the most difficult. Uh, you know, so the top three things that I want to cover with you guys in this video are those things that you should be aware of before even trying to start a business, right? Now, if it's your first time um, on this channel, please consider subscribing as we drop brand new videos every single week like this, telling you that things that people talk about out there aren't as sexy and as cool. And we actually give you the truth, unlike everybody else that's telling you with $500 investment in three months, you can become a millionaire, right? We tell you the ugly truth and as is. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it helps it rank in the algorithm and also drop your questions below this video, telling us what more you'd like to see from this channel or also any questions you have about this topic. So the very first thing is obviously you need money, right? And anybody that says you don't need money is purely stupid and, and they don't understand what they're talking about because I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what business you're running. I don't care what it is you're doing. You're going to need some form of capital. Now, some businesses require more capital than others. Um, you know, some business you can bootstrap, which is kind of scrapping your way around and then getting some money from here or here and then making it work and then just using the cash flow from that business, reinvesting it back in the business to grow, which that's capital, right? Uh, other businesses are more cash intensive where you need to raise more capital. You need to go to, uh, you know, uh, 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 venture capitalists or angel investors or friends and family and raise money so that way you can build that business. So the very first thing you can understand is that you need money, right? Now, a traditional business, um, 5, 10, 20 years ago, you needed a minimum of fifty to $200,000. I know when I bought my restaurant, we bought it for $200,000. And then we invested hundreds of thousands over the, the course of three years that we owned it, right? Uh, for something like, say, an online business, like an Amazon business, you're going to need about $10,000 to get it off the ground, get the right proper training, you know, get inventory, launch tools, all that kind of stuff, right? So capital is the very first thing. And I know many of you guys watching this video maybe don't have capital. And you're like, dude, I can't eat. I don't even have $2,000. Well, think again, because the world is abundant. There's abundance of money around you, right? Just because you don't have money personally <clears throat> doesn't mean that you cannot raise money to start a business. I have a video on this channel where I talk about if I were to go completely broke, what would I do to get to where I am? And I explain how you can raise capital and you can simply find a business idea um, that is interesting. And then you find somebody that's got that five, 10, 50, a hundred thousand dollars or multiple people that have that money to, that will invest in your idea. Something like Shark Tank. If you guys haven't watched the show Shark Tank, you should freaking watch it and, and see how entrepreneurs all over the world are able to start businesses from literally nothing and then go, you know, once they have proof of concept, they go to investors like the sharks and then they simply get them to invest money and resources in their businesses for a stake uh, in, the, in the business, right? So capital is the very first thing. The second thing is um, time, you know, time. And, you know, this is like one thing, I, it just mind boggles me when I get this question. And I know our team now gets it all the time as well is, you know, 
what is the minimum amount of time that I need to invest in my business in order for me to make five or $10,000 per month? How much do I really need to put in to do this? What if I only want to make this much? How much time, like, if that's your thing, and that's why I'm saying not everybody's cut out to become an entrepreneur, because if you want to become an entrepreneur, you're taking a lot of shit. You're taking a lot of heat. You're taking a lot of responsibility. And you're thinking about what's the minimum. You're talking about minimums. If you're talking about minimums, stay at a job. Go to school, get a degree. Hopefully, you'll get a job within a couple of years after. And then just do that. Because you're probably not cut out for entrepreneurship. Because an entrepreneur does not think about what is the minimum or what is the time or whatever. They think about every single waking hour that I'm awake, I am going to put in into building my business. If I have a job, I work from nine to five and then from six to whenever the hell I fall asleep, I'm gonna be working at my business, making sure that my business improving, right? Because the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. It's your own business. You started this thing because you wanted to become independent. Well, do understand, it doesn't come easy. People look at me today and they're like, wow, I wanna have your life. But they don't see that in order for me to have gotten here, I technically started on my entrepreneurial journey back in 2009, 2010. And I've owned and operated nine businesses, seven of which either failed or completely, you know, or just we shut down or whatever, right? And then only the last two have succeeded, which is my Amazon selling business and then now my Amazon coaching business, right? So you've got to see that there is 10, 11 years in the, in the works and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars have been invested and hundreds of thousands of hours in the last decade until I got to where I am today, right? And so for you to become successful and want to be a, a, you know, a, a great entrepreneur, do understand for the next decade, you're probably gonna eat shit, right? Now, some of you might go on and then your first business and boom, it succeeds, but that doesn't mean anything else you start after succeeds. Until this day, we launch new campaigns, you do, we start new ventures, and they fail. And the reason why you don't hear about them because they probably tumbled and failed before we are even able to tell the world about it, right? And also say goodbye to holidays, say goodbye to birthdays, say goodbye to friends and family and loved ones because screw that, you don't have time for anybody. After I was a seven figure earner for multiple years, I moved away from family so I can become an eight figure earner. And in the last year, I've only seen my family once and I've only seen my friends once. And I only talk to my family like once or twice per month. Otherwise, I'm just focused seven days a week. Today is Saturday when I'm recording this video, right? That's all I do is work, 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 building the team, offering opportunity for our team, making sure our students have to get the best results in the shortest time possible. And this is 10 years after I'm now an eight figure earner. I want to go to nine figures. I want to keep growing because as an entrepreneur, I'm taking greater than normal risk. So for it to pay off, I want to grow as much as possible because I know at any point things might pop off and might as well accomplish the best while I can, right? So that's the thing that you have to understand is that it's not all glamorous and all crazy stuff. Now look, if you are somebody who, you know, who can take in the heat and that's the number three that I'm gonna go into and that's probably one of the most important and is the reason why many business owners fail and many entrepreneurs don't even get into entrepreneurship. But if you are somebody who's okay with number one and number two so far, and you want to become an entrepreneur and you believe that Amazon FBA is the thing for you, then, and, and you want BJK University to help you, click the link below this video where it'll walk you, it'll take you to a small presentation that walks you through what BJK University is all about and how we can help you throughout the entire journey. So be sure to check out that link. Now, the last thing, and I think this is the most important thing, and this is the one thing that nobody talks about, because obviously, almost everybody knows that you need money. Almost everybody knows that you need time, right? Though, like, this is not rocket science. Everybody knows that, right? But the third thing that nobody talks about is the heat, is the bullshit, is the disputes, it's the heartache, it's the headache, it's the sleepless nights, it's the, you know, your name is on the papers and anything happens, you're liable, right? One thing that I realized in my restaurant business, 
Um, <clears throat> so as an employer, um, when there is something called uh, 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 employment tax, so there is a certain percentage, and then every state has different things. And again, I'm talking about U.S. I don't know how it is in different countries. So in different uh, states, the percentage is higher or lower. But I, and when I was in California, <clears throat> I don't know what it was. Let's just assume it was 5%. So every paycheck that I paid an employee, 5% um, of their paycheck was withheld from them. And then a percentage of that 5%, I, as the employer, needed to match... And then, um, uh, and then alongside with their 5%, report it to the government, give it to the government. So what I did for, for a long time is I was withholding the 5% from them. And then, and then the, the money that I was matching, I was not paying to the government. Because I was like, you know, I could delay this. And then you could like, you know, you could delay stuff, you know. And instead of paying, I think you had to pay it quarterly. And instead of paying it quarterly, you could pay it semi-annually, and then you could like push it. There are small fees that get added, but because the business was so terrible that I was using that money to invest back in the business, to buy you know, inventory, to do all that, and, you know, invest in advertising. Hopefully I can get more people so that way I can pay the government and I can pay everybody else, right? And obviously make sure that the employees get paid, right? So when you do that, what I realized is that after the, the restaurant burned down, I owed, and, and those taxes, like $30,000, $40,000. And then in sales tax, like, you know, when you charge a customer $9.99 plus tax and it's ten whatever, that extra tax, also, I, I withheld, I never gave to the government. Again, not because I didn't want to, because I was like, well, the government can wait an extra two, three months. You know, they're going to charge me a small penalty. I can use that to fund the business, so hopefully I can grow the business, Right. All that money, you know, was maybe sixty or seventy thousand dollars of the hundred fifty thousand dollar debt that I had. And so after the restaurant burned down, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to claim bankruptcy, and then it'll wipe down all that. It'll, it was going to wipe down a decent chunk of my debt, you know, like the money that I owe to 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 food purveyors and and all that stuff. But then what I realized is that even though I have an entity, and even though the entity pretty much occur, you know, uh, incurred that debt, not me personally, not under my social security, was under the company. I, as the business owner, was liable for that money because it's government. Anything that's federal or state or something like that that belongs to the government cannot be wiped out with a bankruptcy. And I was still liable regardless what I did. Even if I, did whatever I did, any time... The government, anytime I, as a person, even not even a business, I, as a person, opened another business and there was money in my bank account, the government could go and put a levy on my account and take all the money out of my, my bank until they have satisfied the debt, right? So I was liable until I actually paid that money off, right? So as a business owner, I am liable for all that stuff. So if you take out a loan, or if you owe money to tax collectors or whatever the case may be, and even if your business goes down, you are still liable for that money. So that's one thing that you all have to understand. It's not this fun, like giggly, yes, an entrepreneur, I'm gonna tell my girlfriend, I'm gonna tell my family, I'm an entrepreneur, I started a business. You have to understand that this is serious, right? This is serious work, this is not a game. You know, you could go to jail if you don't do things right, right? And those are things that anybody wanting to become an entrepreneur, whether if you are trying to sell on Amazon or if you are trying to, you know, do whatever it is that you are doing, you need to understand that all those things happen and all those things are possible. You know, one thing that also happened is a, a you know, and that you see happen all the time is uh, uh, what, what are they called? I think uh, cl class action lawsuits where, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, Karen, you know, customers get together and then they, they you know, sue the company and then the company goes down because of this lawsuit or whatever. Lawsuits, disputes, all that kind of stuff you as a business owner have to face because your name is on that paper. So all those things you have to deal with and you have to be okay with, you know? Now, if after all that stuff, you're like, okay, but it's worth it. Because trust me, it is worth it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shy away and, and I'm not, obviously this video is not meant to, you know, say don't become an entrepreneur this video is to is meant to show you what it is all about to become an entrepreneur right so if after all this you're like okay yeah cool because it's worth it because it is worth it you know i am somebody standing here that have gone through 10 years of trial and error you know a bunch of losses uh, 
I mean, I've been to prison, but not because of, because of uh, uh, something I did at work, but well, it was kind of related, but I was thought for a DUI, I was driving under the influence. I was drinking and driving, right? So I spent a night in jail. It's not like I spent six months in jail, but I spent the night in jail. But, you know, I've gone through all this stuff and, and I've seen different things and I'm telling you, it is definitely worth it, but you have to be okay with going through all this stuff. You have to be willing to go through all this stuff. Now, look, if you found this video valuable, uh, that it's actually telling you the harsh truth and not just giggly and bubbly and telling you how awesome life is and rainbows and sunshines, then please smash thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also, if you want to learn from us and you want us to show you exactly how it's done, because this is how we do it inside of BJK University. We keep it real with you. We show you how it's done. And if you're okay with it, we're going to walk you through the entire process of how it all works and make sure that you succeed. If you want to succeed, click the link below. Outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.